So I'm uh, just going to uh, give a little bit of political context and then we'll talk about the tactics that we use and then finish up with like, the political strategy. Um, so, uh, hello, I'm also going to introduce Ruth, who's coming with me. She's also part of the Focus Unity campaign and hopefully she'll contribute a lot from the floor as well. Um, so, uh, hello, I uh, am part of the Focus Unity campaign and uh, just like you know, uh, with Sylvia Pankhurst and the women's dreadnought, it started off as a women's dreadnought and it became a workers' dreadnought. So, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to you know grow and build a, a mass movement around housing. So, um, a little bit of the um, history was summed up, but I'll just go into a bit of detail. So, um, the campaign was uh, founded by a group of 30 women who were in the Focus E15 um, homeless hospital, which is in Stratford in Newham, in East London. And uh, they formed it when they were handed um, eviction notices and being told that there's no housing for you in London, you're not going to get rehoused, there's no housing for you in Newham, no housing for you in London, you'll either be moved to Manchester, Birmingham or Hastings. These are all working class people, working class women, who were being forced to choose, like, you know, basically, not, not to choose, but to be forced out of their, their community um, because allegedly there is no housing. At the same time, councils across London are selling off public housing like wildfire um, all over London. Every council, every party is doing that. And so um, they decided, you know, and what really brought them together is they all had children. This is the, this is the maternity ward that was being shut down. So they all, all had ch children or, or were pregnant. So they were united in this and they decided, you know, we're not going to stand for this. So they got organised and they got a petition going. And, um, you know, they, they um, I think a lot of it started off with the, um, with the idea, you know, if we, if we go to our representatives, then this will get sorted out. You know, why wouldn't it? You know, we've got a bad situation. Why wouldn't they, you know, sort this out for us? Um, but the position of the... Uh, you know, the establishment representatives in Newham became very apparent very quickly to them. Um, I mean, they were shut out of meetings, and ultimately in this first stage, it all culminated with Robin Wales, who's the mayor of Newham, saying, you know, I know who you are, before they speak, saying, I know who you are, and I know what your campaign's about, and I think it's disgusting. So this is the political environment that they were trying to <coughs> organise. You know, this At this time, it wasn't even a fight back, it was... Uh, you know, asking for a helping hand. So um, the campaign then sort of got um, extra member, uh, extra reinforcements. Members of the Revolutionary Communist Group um, met up with them, uh, gave them a bit of advice, and people from all sort of different political trends became involved. And um, it was culminating in a. It manifested in a weekly street stall every. Saturday, 12 till 2, same place on the Stratford Broadway for, you know, a couple of months at that time, must be about six, seven, going on a year, going up to a year until the point of the occupation. So while it was well known locally, you know, it wasn't at its level of um, fame that is, is achieved through the occupation. And through that time there were a, a number of small actions like um, East Thames Housing, which is the housing association that owns Focus Everton Hostel, had a show flat because they are one of the housing associations that's uh, basically glorified uh, corporate landlords, you know. And so um, they had a show flat, and all the mothers went down with their kids and had a house party in the in the show flat and destroyed it, like made it made it really dirty. <laughs> um, and uh, other other actions such as taking a, a petition to Boris Johnson on an open top double decker bus and um, you know a march as well and this all culminated um, and the year, year anniversary which was the occupation that blew up the campaign and what happened is we occupied a set of four flats which were on uh, the Carpenters estate which is a estate just before, behind Stratford station and this estate has been fighting with the council for over a, over a decade to uh, resist being uh, the residents <coughs> being forced out as a council estate, and the the council the council residents were being forced out initially because UCL decided it wanted to build a new 
um, a new uh, campus in East London. And the students from UCL, along with residents, um, organized together to fight back, and that was halted. But this was, you know, a bit late, you know, because there were a lot of residents had already been decanted. So the council decided it's not going to rehouse any of the people who were evicted in back into their homes, their old homes. So to this day, the, the estate has remained half, over half empty. You know, <coughs> there's 400 uh, households that are standing empty and boarded up. And it looks like a ghost town. But it's right next to the Olympic Village, surrounded by new build power blocks. So it's really surrounded. <coughs> so we occupied a set of these flats because we wanted to highlight that while the council was saying there's no housing for, for people in Newham, in London, they're also withholding housing, that are keeping it empty because they're waiting for them right moment where they can kick everyone out and sell it off as you know private stock. So we occupied it and we um, turned it into a social centre for two weeks and we were running um, we were running sort of educational programs out of that. For example, uh, the basics of plumbing, how to sort out your debt if you're in debt, how to uh, sort of your electric electricity bills if you're having issues with those and just sort of things that can sort of empower people on a basic level to you know uh, alleviate some of the stresses of capitalism and so um, um, that <coughs> obviously brought us into a lot more conflict with the um, council which had already come to a head multiple times one of the times when we went and um, ambushed uh, the New and Mayor show, which originally used to be the the um, the New Newham Town show, but they renamed it the Mayor of Newham show um, because he wanted to, and so <laughs> we got a, a, our speaker system, which has gone everywhere with us. We snuck it in, and Jasmine got on the mic when him and all the councillors were underneath the the slogan of Newham, which is uh, "Live, Work, Stay." Ironic, and um, you know, got on the mic and were you know saying, um, you know, do you know that Newham is sending people out of London, socially cleansing London, and he really did not re respond very well to that. There's a good video of that on YouTube if anyone wants to Google Focus Evil Dean. Essentially, what happens is Sam, one of the women who founded the campaign, approaches him, he flips out and starts ranting at her all on camera, really, really bad, like like very unstatemently of him and, uh, and then he sort of storms off after like the um, private security and police sort of swarm on Jasmine and rip the um, microphone out of the, the jack and I go and ha try to hand him a, a leaflet to which he slaps my hand away which is all on, this is all on, um, all on, the, on, the, on the video. So it really came to a head with the, um, with the occupation when we, um, the council sent round uh, the police um, with the council workers um, and the council, the uh, council bureaucrats and council um, sort of uh, workers to turn off our water, and what they and guarded by police the whole time. And what they did is I don't know if any, like so in the ground when you when you how you turn your water on turn your water off there's they have a tool that they put in. And there's a thing in the ground called a stopcock, mm. and the, the key turns on and turns it like that. And what they did is they snapped it off, and so we couldn't turn our water on. On one side, we managed to turn it up, uh, back on on the other side. And so, I mean, I think that just really showed how, will it, how willing a Labour council, I have to say, is 100% Labour council, Labour mayor, was willing to commit damage on its own stock to suppress this political action. You know, that's important to realise. And so, and it really, really came to a head when we went and tried to get into a council meeting. And the council um, was being held and we tried to go in. And famously, within Newham, the council office, uh, uh, the council room uh, gallery has been closed for refurbishment for about eight years now. <laughs> and, and he said, when we went in, Douglas, who's like, the, the, the handler, like Newham, um, uh, Robin Wales' handler, who we always encounter, Douglas, he's like, you know, we have a, a, like a good banter with him. And he, he was like, um, oh, there's only two spaces for public viewing. And we had turned up with about 60, 50 to 60 of us, all with war drums. We had a drumming, uh, a samba, samba band with us. 
banners, you know, press had turned up, and um, you know we were we weren't going to go, and we waited for him to come out, and we, so the op the option they gave us was to sit in a room like this with the chairs like this and a TV screen of the meeting. That was the option we were given, so we were saying that's not acceptable. So we waited outside, and we got reports that inside the meeting he referred to everyone involved in the campaign as trots and wasters. That's always a nice thing to be called. And so, um, uh, yeah, we waited for him to come out and we basically harangued him really badly, which is, um, you can see that also on, uh, on YouTube. It's just us following him, about 60 people saying, shame on you, shame on you. And to which he's responding, like, oh, like, you know, very, like, very, like, a good politician, like, not letting it phase him, like, ha, ha. He's, like, obviously terrified. And then he was so terrified that a car had to pull up. And actually, when he was trying to get in, he shoved Ruth out of the way to get in. Um, so yeah, that was that was our that was the sort of history going up to that, that major point. And most recently, you know, we, we experienced the um, arrest where uh, uh, Jasmine was arrested uh, in another occupation, and it turned out that the the spokesman for the council said that the the council had uh, like worked with the police on this, and the police had come in when they had, uh, the person whose house was being occupied, they said to her, come down to the office and we'll talk about this. So she came down to the office with a group of people, leaving a skeleton crew in the house, at which point the police go in, <laughs> hand out warnings to two of the, the people there uh, through intimidation, um, threaten to take the children away, play the whole good cop, bad cop mentality, you know, mind games, and then ultimately arrest Jasmine, at which point you know, we call it like 100 people down, to, well, maybe probably about more like 70 people down to the police station, and we make noise outside until she's released, and which she is, because they were threatening originally to keep her until until court tomorrow. There was no charges at the end of it anyway. You know, it's all intimidation. Um, so yeah, that was that's kind of where we are now, and we're we're now trying to um, we're, we're going to be talking a little bit more about you know um, police and like the upcoming. You know, um, times to come because they'll play a, a greater role. We feel. Um, so, in terms of tactics, we try to use a mix of tactics. We're trying to use direct action. We're trying to. We are committed to our stall, our street stall, 100%. That we will never ever not have the street stall because the most important thing to us is that we're on. People know where we are and they know that they can come and talk to us on a regular basis. And and the the stall is, a it's like a it's kind of like a big street party. We have the sound system playing music. Anyone, we have an open mic policy. Anyone can come and voice their opinion. Um, even if we disagree with you, we say no fascists. But you know, anyone, anyone who wants to come, you can say whatever you want and we'll have a debate. That's what we think is important. That's how we're gonna make political decisions through open democratic debate. And um, so, um, yeah, that's our, that's our main hub and that's such a good, tool because what it means is like we're really anchored to a place and people really know to where they can find us and that we're going to be there and they can rely on us in a sense and um other we we only did one protest uh one march sorry and that was um that was before we kind of blew up most of our actions have been direct actions occupations of people whose houses have been um they've been evicted from so I mean, this is a big this is a big thing for us. We're trying to actually deal with people's issues like head on, right? If people have been evicted, we're going to not go through the acceptable channels that have been allowed to us. Are you telling me to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we're not going to rely on those channels. We're going to take things into our own hands, right? So that's a big thing that we've been doing a lot, and a lot of direct action, getting people's faces and kind of bothering people and filming it. Filming it is always important because it's good propaganda. Um, political strategy, we, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a movement, uh, an autonomous movement. When I say autonomous, I don't mean anarchism, I mean autonomous in that it is the people who are affected who are leading it and they are, their interests are at the forefront. So this is why we try and organize on the streets because we're trying to find the people who are most affected, those who are most downtrodden, because they are the ones who are going to ultimately, we can't just do this on our own, you know. We need to be 
supporting people in their struggle. So that's that's um, that's who we're trying to get to lead this movement. And um, yeah, their interests should be first. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.